Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 29th March 2024. So first, we are going to take PDF of Hindu and we are going to pick out the articles. So many students, you are doing this mistake that is, whenever you are starting preparation of that day, start with syllabus. So go through the syllabus. Then you will be getting idea like what are the topics which are present in our syllabus and we are going to understand like which topic is relevant from our examination point of view. And one more update that we are getting regarding changes in our UPSC pattern. Okay, so the students who want to try, try this year very hardly or next year. So by 2025 or 2026, we are expecting that there will be changes in UPSC pattern. So first one is decreasing of age limit, but it has not yet been officially declared. But there are some committee recommendations are saying that there will be decreasing of age limit, number of attempts, and there will be no optional paper. Okay, so try to keep your mindset according to that recommendations of different committees. And as soon as this elections of Lok Sabha, so they are going to implement this, it seems. As of now, it has not been declared officially. Okay, so now let us see the front page of UPSC, uh, that is Hindu. And this article is important from our UPSC point of view. Title says, Core Sector Output Growth Spurts to 6.7% in February. So this article is talking about core sector output. So first of all, you have to know like the keyword is what is this core sector? And this topic is at most important from your GS paper 3 and the economy point of view. So now I will let you know some important dimensions regarding this topic. So before that, I want to announce that we started our offline branch in Ashok Nagar, Hyderabad. So we are going to come up with this offline batch and that is going to be started from first week of July and admissions are going on and we are getting admissions and one more thing is we have the capacity of very less that is 70 students for batch. So if you want to get this offline coaching, so you have to register as soon as possible before running out of seats. And if you want to do registration or admission, so you can contact us on this number 8074765513. And offline branch is located in this Ashok Nagar at this pillar number 36. So if you want to meet me directly and if you want to contact me directly and if you want to talk to me or if you want to get the guidance, you can come to this offline branch and I will be available from morning 9 o'clock till evening 6. So I will be reaching this office by 7.30 to 8, but I have my Hindu recording. So after that, I will be in the office so that you can come and you can contact me. And even we are also coming up with this online batch. Online batch already had been started. So in this online batch, we have combination of recorded plus live classes. So recorded class will be there for static and we are coming up with a new series of recordings also. And if you are from Tamil Nadu or Karnataka, Kerala and Northeast, Odisha and Bihar, so most of our students are from these areas. So if you are from that area, if you can't come to this offline branch and if you are not affordable for this offline, then you can go with this online. Okay. So this is about this courses that we are launching and already launched. And if you want to talk to me or if you want to get the details of this course, you can text me on this number 8074765513 on WhatsApp or Telegram or even you can make a, do make a call directly. Okay, so now let us see the dimensions regarding that article. So this article is talking about core sector. So this article <coughs> is important from GS paper 3 under economy. So first of all, you have to know like what are these core sectors. So we have five important, sorry, eight important things. They are part of this core sector. I will give you one mnemonic to remember these core sectors. 
F E R N S three C's. F for fertilizer, E for electricity, R for refineries, N for natural gas, S for steel, coal, cement, okay, and crude oil. So these are eight important core sectors. So here you have to see like what is the significance of this core sector. So why we are bothering about the performance of this core sector? And also one more area you have to focus is how we are measuring the performance of this core sector. We have index of industrial production that is IIP. So all these are important things that you have to see. So now let us see this article in detail. So this article says that India's eight core sectors output growth had been increased to a three month high. So in February, the growth is 6.7 percentage and already you know that some sectors are doing well and some sectors are not doing well. So which are those things which are doing well are like coal, natural gas and cement but fertilizers they are not much working okay they are not like seeing like a growth it is just 9.5 percentage of growth that is seen. And even in this uh, fertilized sector, we can see there is contraction of the growth. Okay, so this is about the introduction. And if you see like what is this index of industrial production. So this index of industrial production, this index which shows the growth rates in different industries. Okay, so it shows growth rates in different industry groups of the economy in a fixed period of time. In a fixed period of time, how these eight industries you are showing the growth that is the thing which measured in this index of industrial production and who will come who will come up with this index so this index is compiled and published by central statistical organization and every month we can see this iip iip will uh, be in news every month and it comes under mosby that is ministry of statistics and program implementation so this is also very important for your problems and this index of industrial production, it is a composite indicator that measures the growth rate of industry. Okay, so it is measuring this growth rate of industrial groups. So we have different industrial groups like we have broad sector. Okay, so in this broad sectors, we have like mining, manufacturing and electricity. So here in this way also you can get a question like, so which of the following comes in the broad sector? So in this broad sector we have mining, manufacturing and electricity and in this use based sectors we have basic goods, capital goods and intermediate goods. So what is the base year we are using here? So base year is 2011 to 2012 and these 8 core industries of India so they represent around 40 percentage of the weight of items. Okay, so eight core industries of India, they represent about 40 percentage of weight of the items that are included in this IIP. So because of this is very important. So why we are measuring this IIP? So what is the significance of this IIP? So first important one is IIP is only measured to physical volume of production. Okay, so it will be measuring like how physically the number of production which is happening in these eight important industries. And here this IIP which is used by government agencies like Ministry of Finance, Reserve Bank of India etc. So that they will know like what exactly is happening in our country and how our manufacturing sector is going on. So if they are doing good it's well. If it is not good, doing good or if it is going bad or contraction then government will be taking some steps or policy measures to correct that thing. Okay, so in this way here IIP is very important. IIP is used by government agencies including Ministry of Finance, RBI etc for policy making purposes. And IIP which also remains extremely relevant for the calculation of quarterly and advanced GDP estimates. So for that quarterly and advanced GDP estimates also it is very useful. Yeah, now let us move on to next topic. 
so here this sees our front page right so there is also one more important article that is government should apologize government should apologize to youth for flawed agnivir scheme says congress president so we are not talking about who and which party is making that statement which political party so we are always concerned about what that scheme is about and there is a high chance of getting question regarding this agni veer scheme in your prelims 2024 so i will give you like the dimensions that you have to think from this article so this article is talking about agni veer okay it is talking about agni veer scheme so this article is important from gs paper to under governments so in your governance subject you will be studying about different schemes so from that point of it is important and you can expect schemes from your prelims and as well as mains so from prelims and mains you can expect a question regarding this agni veer scheme so from prelims you can get like directly the statements regarding what are the features and what are the objectives so what are the highlights so that thing that you have to see like which ministry and which is implementing agency like that you will be getting questions but main point of you have to see analysis so in this analysis you have to understand so what are the important features and what are the positives and what are the negatives and what are the challenges So in this way, if you read about this topic, then that will be very useful to write a mains answer from the scheme point of view. Okay, so these are the dimensions that you have to see from this Agni Veer scheme. And in the city page, there is nothing much important. You can simply leave this page, and you can directly move on to this edit, uh, states page, not editorial. So let us find out the articles important from our. states point of view here you can see one useful article from our space technology title says sky route aerospace successfully test fires stage 2 of vikram 1 launch vehicle in ap sri harikota so this is title and there are two key words that you have to focus so first one is what is this sky route aerospace So till now, whenever you are studying about the space explorations or space regarding advancements, so we studied about ISRO, India Space Research Organization. But what is the Sky Route? I am seeing for the first time. So as it is private agency. Okay, it is private agency. And next uh, keyword here is what is this Vikram One launch vehicle? Okay, Vikram One launch vehicle. So, do you know about this Vikram S? Okay, Vikram S is very important because it is one of the first private rocket of India. So, India's first private rocket is Vikram S by Sky Route. Clear? So, now let us see the dimensions. So, here as I said, there are two keywords. So, first one is Vikram One. launch vehicle and the second one is sky route so first one is vikram one launch vehicle second one is sky route so here you have to see like what is this vikram one so what are the uses or applications Okay, so what is this test is about? It is about test of stage two. That means in this Vikram one we have four stages. Now there is a test for stage two. And another dimension is sky route. So this is private organization or private agency. So when a private agency they are also coming up with their Vikram S or Vikram one, then we can say like. we are supporting private in the space sector yes or no okay so here india wants to be 
run in this space race. So because of this, we are also encouraging this private sector. So here you have to think like what are the measures? You have to think like what are the measures taken by government of India to encourage private sector in this space explorations. Okay, so in this way you have to see and you have to see even some basic facts regarding this sky route. Okay, and this topic is important from GS paper 3 under science and technology. And this area, like what are the measures taken by government of India to encourage private sector in the space agency? So this will be the part of our GS paper to governance. Clear? Now let us see the notes part. So why it is in news? Leading space tech company. So one of the leading space tech company in our India is Skyroot Aerospace. So recently Skyroot Aerospace conducted or successfully test fired stage 2 of its Vikram 1 launch vehicle. Okay. So it successfully test fired stage 2 of its Vikram 1 launch vehicle at the propulsion test bed of ISRO. So at this ISRO test bed, so finally it had done with this test 2 or the stage 2 test of this Vikram 1 launch vehicle. So if you see some more important facts of this launch vehicle, so this Vikram 1 it is having like multiple stages, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4, actually it is having 4 stages. And this stage 2 is called as Kalam 250 and this stage 2 is very important during the ascent of launch vehicle. Okay, And especially during the launch of this vehicle, this stage 2 plays a very important role. Because it will launch vehicle since it will propel rocket through the Earth's atmosphere into this vacuum of space. So whenever rocket is entering from this atmosphere of, in, of Earth towards this vacuum of space, so at that time this stage 2 plays a very important role. And this Vikram 1 launch will be a landmark event for Indian space sector and it will be the country's first private orbital rocket launch. So if you have come up with this or successfully done with this Vikram 1 launch then we can say like it is India's first private orbital rocket launch. And it follows up orbital launch of India's first private rocket that is Vikram S by Sky route in November 2022. Is that clear? And now let us see the facts regarding what is the Sky route aerospace. So here this Sky route aerospace it is like the national award winning startup and it is building its first privately built space launch vehicles and it is founded by the former scientist of Indian Space Research Organization and it is having around 150 plus member strong team and they are actively developing this flagship Vikram series of space launch vehicles. Okay. And this Vikram name as per like they got this name after ISRO founder that is Vikram Sarabhai. So last year Skyroot successfully demonstrated country's first privately developed cryogenic engine that is Dawan 1. So you can get a question like recently Dawan 1 is in use what it is. So it is first privately developed cryogenic engine by this sky route and the engine will be upper stage in this Vikram 2 rocket was completely 3D printed using this super alloy with the process reducing the manufacturing time by 95 percentage. So what happened is so whenever the private is involving we can improve the competition and we can improve the quality. So here here with this engine they came up so they reduced the manufacturing time by 95 percentage. And what is this Vikram? Vikram it is a small lift launch vehicle and the capability of this Vikram one it can put around 225 kg payloads into this sun synchronous polar orbit. So it is very important. So what is the capacity of payload of this Vikram one that is around 225 kg. And Vikram 1 rocket will use like 4 solid fuel based stages. Okay and recently for this stage 2 yes the test had been done. And now let us move on to our page. Okay states page. 
and if you go on here so there is nothing much important so leave the spotlight and as well as metro plus in this friday's newspaper yes here you can see like in this editorial page there are two important articles so first one is about pandemic treaty the countdown to pandemic treaty so as in january 2024 itself we came up with this concept of signing of this pandemic treaty or agreement so we have to see that for sure okay so in march 2021 so here we came with the extraordinary call for pandemic treaty and this treaty had been issued by 25 heads of government and international agencies and actually they want to focus on this global health governance so now let us see this article in detail and i will be giving you the dimensions first so it is talking about pandemic treaty So actually in March 2021 itself, so this pandemic treaty came into existence and this pandemic treaty is talking about global health governance. I want to give you one tip students. So many of you are writing answers, right? But you have to include some keywords. For example, if you're writing an answer regarding this pandemic treaty, you have to include this word. What is this global health governance? Okay, so you have to include this word global health governance and you have to underline it so that that will enhance, enhance the value to your answers. Okay, so you have to write this type of some strong words. So here you have to see like what is this pandemic treaty and what are the provisions in this treaty. And you have to see like what is this concept of disease X and what are the advantages of this treaty and what are the challenges. So this disease X we can connect this topic from GS paper 3 under science and technology. So these are the important dimensions regarding this topic. So now let us see this topic in detail. So this is talking about pandemic treaty or pandemic agreement. In March 2021 an extraordinary call for a pandemic treaty was issued by 25 heads of government and international agencies. So I can say it is one of the pivotal movement for this global health governance. So talking about this disease X, so disease X, it is not a specific disease, but we gave this term disease X to be used to represent hypothetical unknown or unexpected infectious disease. So we don't have any idea like Corona that will come and that will devast each and every economy of the country and as well as health system, etc. So we don't know like what happens in future because of development of science and technology. Okay, so this is X, it is not a specific disease, but we are going to name it as un unknown, hypothetical and unexpected or any infectious disease that could potentially cause a future epidemic or a future pandemic. And this concept of disease X was introduced by World Health Organization and this is as per the part of research and development blueprint and it is a global strategy for addressing public health emergencies including emerging infectious diseases okay regarding this public health emergencies and regarding this infectious diseases yes research and development blueprint and who came up with this concept of disease x and what is this pandemic treaty is all about the so pandemic treaty is also called as pandemic prevention preparedness and response accord pandemic prevention preparedness and response accord and this pandemic treaty it is currently under negotiation okay of an international agreement to strengthen the global response to future pandemics so they want to curtail this future pandemics and if you see this uh, pandemic treaty which brought from the lessons learned from covid 19 crisis 
So from this COVID-19 crisis, each and every country understand like what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses in this healthcare. And even India also identify like where the loopholes are there in our healthcare system. Okay, so because of this, we have to enhance our cooperation so that we can improve our preparedness to prevent further future outbreaks. Okay, and we can also come out of this devastating pandemics as well. So what are the potential benefits of this treaty? So first one here is this treaty will leads to increase of early detection and we will be focusing on the response to the outbreaks early and even we can focus on the distribution of the vaccines and other medical countermeasures and this treaty will also ensure more equitable access to this healthcare and especially to maintain the proper healthcare services during this pandemic. And this one is it will also contribute for the establishment of stronger global health systems. Okay. And what are the challenges and concerns? First one is reaching consensus. It is a very key issue. Particularly when we are focusing on equitable access and WHO's role which remains a very important challenge. And ensuring of national governments fulfill their commitments under the treaty is also one of the cause of concern. Okay. So all governments they have to come together, they have to make agreement, right? So it is also one cause of concern. And treaty could potentially impact national sovereignty and as well as intellectual property rights. So it is also one cause of concern. And securing adequate funding for implementation, it is also a significant challenge. So whenever you are ensuring the funding, so sometimes many developed countries say that we are going to fund, but it will not going to happen, right? So funding will be also like a very important challenge. And now let us move on to our Hindu page. Again, there is one more article that is understanding India's coal imports. So now we enter into this crouching summer. Yes, actually yesterday I went outside for a small party. So at that time I felt like it was too hot. Especially I started from office around 12 uh, p.m. Okay, sorry, 12 a.m. Like 11.30 to like 11.45 a.m. I went outside and I had purchased a gift for my friend's marriage. Yeah, and after that I went to function hall and I found like it was very, very hot. So here I thought that I have to keep AC in car around 4. So I kept four. So at that time I understood like in the summer there will be increase in the demand of energy. So today morning I opened uh, this Hindu paper and I saw the same article here that is about electricity shortage. So now let us try to understand this article in detail. So I will be giving you like dimension so that it will make at least somewhat easy to understand this what is going on. So this article is talking about coal shortage. So why coal is important? Yes, we are dependent on thermal energy or thermal power. So we are dependent on this thermal power. If you are talking about types of coal, so how many types of coal is there? So we have normally four types. Anthracite coal, bituminous coal, lignite and peat. So this type of coal you will be studying in GS paper 1 under geography and not only type of coal from geography you will be seeing like formation of coal so in which type of rocks you can see the formation of coal is happening that is normally sedimentary rocks so in sedimentary rocks we have this coal formation and if you see from again geography point of view, in India, what are the coal is present that belongs to Gondwana period or Gondwana rocks. That means we are not having very poor, uh, very pure, very pure coal. We have very poor coal that is more carbon content. 
and ash content and water content and even coal it is not in the black color it is in brown color so here you have to see map of india where coal reserves are located so you have to see like where coal reserves are located in india and you can see even extraction of coal and even you have to see like in which states we have good coal reserves so these are the diamonds from geography i am saying that might you have already read in your ncrts okay now let us see what is this article is saying yes we have good coal reserves and we are extracting the coal but we have faced this shortage of coal because of lack of logistics Okay, because of lack of logistics, we are facing this problem of coal shortage. And what are the solutions that we have here? The first one is we can go for importing of coal. And second one is we can shift towards alternate energy. Okay, we can shift for this alternate energy. So these are the very important things that you have to see from this article point of view and now let us see the expression part which is given in this article so this article is important from environment and ecology geography point of view and even from economy gs paper 3 point of view so here now we are facing electricity shortages so electricity shortages rises again as hot weather descends across the country yes in the summer we are going to expect that there will be very hot and even recent february it is the very hottest month that is declared and we said that article because of climate change so here in this hot weather there will be increased demand for electricity because now we are using acs fans etc right so in the recent years increasingly unprecedented uh, unprecedented weather patterns and also fast growing economy that have led to being uh, increase in the electricity demand the meeting of which is in reliable way becomes a challenge so actually yes because of summer because of increasing of hotness energy demand will be increased for sure and even in this summer season there will be summer holidays for the children and they will be sitting before systems or they will be sitting before tv and mobile phones and again there will be further increase of demand of electricity they will be sitting in one room Okay, and they will be carrying their work and some will be seeing in another room like that. So because of this energy demand is increasing day by day and to meet that energy demand is becoming a challenge. So here this article says that electricity shortage is seen in the month of August. It was about 840 million units. So why? Why? Because of we do not have proper monsoon. So there is poor monsoon because of this El Nino this year. And this has led to the increased demand and reduced supply from some sources. And if you see this considering of August month, the month with the greatest electricity shortage in 2023. So electricity shortage in this August month was about 840 million units because of poor monsoon and that is leading to the increased demand. And actually if you see the data it says that it is pertinent that this shortage was just 0.55 percentage of demand that month so in that month this shortage is just 0.55 percent and if you have like 0.6 million tons of domestic coal then that would be like addressing the shortage of that electricity in that month but not only 0.6 million tons of domestic coal is available but we have the capacity of around 30 million tons of coal which is available in the coal mines in this month of August and September. But the challenge it is about especially logistics that is supplying of this coal is problem. It is not about the availability of domestic coal. So especially normally coal it is mainly transported using this freight or railways right. So there are some logistical issues which are associated with this railway network. So because of the supply of this domestic coal which remain constrained. Okay so this is about this topic. And next topic it is about tech chains facing European Union scrutiny. Okay, so this article is very very important 
from your GS paper to under science and technology and from GS paper to from uh, GS paper to science and technology and GS paper to international relations. So now let us see why it is in news. The European Commission has launched non compliance investigations against tech chains, for example, Apple, Meta, Google Parent Alphabet and Amazon to ensure fair and contestable markets in digital sector as per the provisions of Digital Markets Act. So as per the provisions of this Digital Market Act, European Commission has launched non compliance investigations against this Apple, Meta and Google Parents Alphabet and Amazon. So they are asking to ensure fair and contestable markets in this digital sector. So investigations are focusing that they are alleged violations related to the customers to in-house services, ranking practices, marketplaces, etc. And this commission is also assessed that it is mandated to follow the reports and gather stakeholder feedback before launching investigations and even it is also expressing the concerns about the compliance with this provisions by this alphabet, apple and meta. So they are doing some violations in this digital practices. And next topic it is about measuring of internet freedom in India in last 10 years. So this article is also very important. So India has consistently toppled global list of countries imposing internet bans. Yes, internet bans we are going and it is according to this telecom act itself. So here you have to know like approximately 60% of all recorded blockouts worldwide. It is happening in India. And if you are talking about this internet shutdowns, recently in Manipur, okay, to stop this communal violence, also we impose this internet shutdown. And uh, especially for this uh, national security and to stop the threats to public order and especially against Citizenship Amendment Act, abrogation of Article 370 and reduction of farm bills. So in these areas, especially to maintain this national security and peace, government imposed this interna internet bans. And if you see some more details, Indian states and union territories, they can impose shutdowns only in the case of public emergency and only in the case of interest of public safety as per this Indian Telegraph Act. However, the law which mainly lacks a clear definition. So there is no clear definitions for what constitutes emergency or safety issue. So because of this, we can see like exploitation of internet ban is happening. Okay, so these are the very important articles that appeared. And now let us move back to our Hindu. And in this opinion page, there is article regarding this electoral bond scheme. And number of times I discussed this topic. Okay, we are not going to see that topic once again. So just revise the topic like what are these electoral bonds? What are the provisions of these bonds? So why SBI is involved and why Supreme Court is involved? So why this electoral bond is declared as null and void by this Supreme Court? So that thing that you have to see. And if you move on, in this text and context, I discuss this topic of UU scrutiny and I discuss this topic of this freedom of internet, internet ban in India. And if you move on to this news page, here you can see one article that is Government extends of spa in parts of Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh. So here Union Home Ministry extended Armed Forces Special Parts Act in parts of Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh for another six months. So here just you have to know about what is this of spa, in which states present implementation of this of spa is going on. That is very important. And if you move on, I found very interesting article. So I am thinking that I have to come up with a making of short of that topic. So if time permits, I will be preparing that short today itself. Yes. Uh, if you see this article, it says India should lead the way on peace process, says Ukraine finance minister or foreign minister. Okay, Ukraine foreign minister is saying that India will join peace summit which hosted by the Switzerland this summer and also play a role in bringing Russia on the table. Okay, because you know that India and Russia are all 
time friends or all weather friends so because of this ukraine which is asking india that to participate in this peace summit which is going to be hosted by switzerland and to bring this russia onto the table and we have to come up with this establishment of peace and next topic it is about households across the world waste 1 billion meals a day says united nation report so this is food waste Food Waste Index Report 2024 and this is jointly authored by UNAP that is United Nations Environment Program and Waste Resource Action Program. So Waste and Resource Action Program and United Nations Environment Program. So they came up with this Food Waste Index Report 2024 and in this report they said that across the world over 1 billion meals in a day is wasted in 2022. Also on another side about 783 million people are struggling for hunger and third of humanity faced insecurity. So food insecurity you are facing, you are facing hunger. So even though here across the world 1 billion meals you are wasting a day. Okay, so this report which released ahead of International Day of Zero Waste. Okay, so that is the thing which mainly said and I am going to make the short on this video today. Okay, short video on this article. And in this business page I found nothing much important. Yeah, here you can see one article. There is only 4 percentage of firms in India, they are ready to tackle the cyber security risk. So only 4 percent firms in India, they have mature levels of readiness which is required to re resilient against modern cyber security risk. So this is the thing which mainly said by Cisco in its 2023 cyber security readiness index. So this article is talking about cyber security readiness index. So you have to see what is the data which is given. Okay, that's it. So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. I hope you enjoyed this session. And I want to show you like where can you get the notes of this class. So this is our Rathod's IS classes telegram channel. Please do join this channel so that you will be getting updates of notes. And as well as whenever we are recording the important topics for your prelims 2024, we will be posting the links here so that you will be getting the notifications and you will be not missing anything. And this is our YouTube channel, Rathod's Eyes Academy YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to this channel and do support us. And this is our Rathod's Eyes Academy website. Okay. So here we are providing this online courses and prelims is very much near. If you are having any doubt regarding any subject, if you want to take single subject module. Okay. So you can take this single subject module also. And the cost is less than 3000 rupees. Okay, so try to uh, take these courses so that it will be very advantageous for your preparation. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you did like this class, hit the like button and please do share this class to your friends also. Thank you so much for watching.